Well, good morning. Welcome to Shepherd Drive Baptist Church. We're so glad that you've been able to join us for virtual church or for what some people are calling it church, but not as we know it. Can we encourage you to use the playlist that we've put together uh, for the services on Sunday mornings? Uh, that will take you through uh, the introduction, the songs, the prayers, and also the message and talk uh, that we're looking at this morning. You can access that uh, via the Shepherd Drive Baptist Church YouTube channel or simply by going onto our homepage on our church website and clicking on the link there that will do uh, all the hard work for you. As a church family here, we are a mix of people uh, from all different backgrounds and countries and situations, but we are united by what we believe to be most important, and that is knowing Jesus personally and living for him. And as a church family, our aim is to share the word of God and the love of God and to introduce people to Jesus. So great to have you with us. We hope you'll enjoy uh, our morning service today and we hope you'll use the time to look at our website as well and find out more about us as a church family here and more about Jesus. And we really do mean what we say on our sign uh, just on the front of the church, that everybody is welcome. So do come and join us now. Well, good morning. Welcome to our service. It's great to have you with us. And uh, my name is Simon. I'm going to be leading our time together this morning. If you're here for the first time, uh, let me encourage you to have a look at our website uh, where you'll find a, a number of details about us uh, and have the opportunity to get to know us a bit better. You'll see uh, who we are, what our aims are as a church, uh, and also what we believe. Uh, and if you're here for the first time as a starting point, then you might find it helpful to look at the section on our website headed up Christianity what's it all about, uh, where you'll find a number of videos and other resources to help you find out more uh, about who Jesus is, about why he came, and about why that matters so much. Uh, and if you'd like to join the virtual Christianity Explore course that we're planning to run uh, by Zoom very shortly, then please, do please contact us uh, by phone or using one of the contact forms on the website, and we'll be very happy to include you. Uh, and then finally, can I recommend to you uh, two very uh, slim booklets, uh, which you might find very helpful at this time. The first is called uh, Where is God in a Coronavirus World by a man called John Lennox. Uh, that might be a question that you're asking yourself at this time or that your friends are asking. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, let me recommend that booklet to you. It deals with that question uh, very helpfully. It gives real answers to it and it points to the security that we can know in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and then secondly, uh, a book called Beyond the Big Sea, uh, which sets out the journey of a man called Jeremy Marshall, who was diagnosed with incurable cancer a few years ago. Uh, reads on the back and says, the essence of Jeremy's story is that despite the sickness and disease present in the world, a life lived in light of Christ's death on the cross means there is hope for the future no matter what. Uh, we're ha very happy to recommend those booklets uh, to you at this time. And if you'd like a copy of either of those books, uh, they're completely free. We'll be very happy to supply one to you. Do please just get in contact with us and we'll be very happy to get one to you by post or to pop it uh, through your letterbox. Well, as we meet together this morning and we come to the end of our series uh, in the book of Daniel, we'll be thinking about the greatness of God and the power and majesty uh, of God. And as we begin our time together, uh, let's hear God's word as it speaks of those realities from Psalm 8, which I'm going to read uh, to you now. Let's hear God's word. Psalm 8 reads, O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean currents. 
O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Well, that's a great psalm that points us to the creator uh, of the world that we uh, live in and we uh, have the opportunity to enjoy uh, and perhaps the world that we're uh, getting to see a bit more in this uh, very strange and weird time. Well, in a few moments, I'm going to go through uh, some notices, but first we have a short talk uh, by Christine uh, for the children. So I'm going to hand over to her now. Hello, everybody. How are you today? I hope that you've had a good week. I'm still missing you. And I wonder what you've been up to. I do know that some of you have been looking after your plants that we planted at Diggers a few weeks ago because your mums have sent me pictures of beautiful plants. Also, I've heard that one of you is going to tie-dye a t-shirt. I wonder how that turned out. And I wonder if some of you have been part of the VE Day celebrations that took part on Friday. Perhaps you put some bunting up in your house. Maybe you celebrated outside on your front lawn. I hope you had a lovely day, whatever you did. Isn't it lovely to enjoy the sunshine? We're still locked down, aren't we? And it still feels a little bit strange. And I've learned some more things this week that I want to share with you. Can you remember that last week we talked about the little puzzle piece and we said, didn't we, how we only see this tiny piece, but God sees everything. Isn't that wonderful to remember? And you know, this week I want us to talk about talking and communicating. Now, while we've been locked down and you've only been able to speak to the people in your house, I wonder how have you talked to other people? Maybe with your neighbours, you've shouted over the fence, morning! I have done that a little bit. Maybe you've even written letters to people that you wouldn't normally write letters to. Or perhaps you've rung people up on your telephone. Or perhaps with your parents, you've used WhatsApp and FaceTime. Maybe you've got a tablet like I have, and that's really handy to be able to talk to people. Now, up until about six weeks ago, I thought Zoom was something that aeroplanes did. But who knew? It's actually something that you can get on your computer. Zoom is a really clever thing. I don't know if you've actually done it. Perhaps you've done it at home with your parents and you can get lots of different people up on a screen and you can talk to them all at once. It's really, really clever and I've been so excited whenever I've been invited to a Zoom meeting because that means I get to see people that are not in my house. It works really well, but the only problem is if everyone speaks at the same time, it gets a bit difficult to hear who said what. And you know, sometimes I've had to be muted. Simon says, he wishes that I had a mute button and that he could meet, make me quiet at home sometimes, but that's never going to happen, is it? But do you know what? When you're on Zoom, if everyone speaks at once, it gets a little bit tricky and you can't always tell who is speaking. But it's a wonderful thing when one person speaks at a time. And you know, that reminded me of how we can talk to God all at once. God doesn't mute us. God doesn't say, uh, no, this is not your time. You'll have to come back later. God says, pray to me all the time. Tell me how you feel and talk to me. Praying to God is how we communicate with God. And it doesn't matter where we are, if we're outside in our garden or if we're at home, we can talk to God wherever we are. And that is a wonderful thing to remember. Do you know, God's word, the Bible says, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus <gasps> That is a wonderful thing, isn't it? It tells us that we can pray to God all the time and that God wants us to talk to him about anything. So what I wanted to share with you this week is, wherever you are, 
pray to God and talk to God. And remember, it doesn't matter if thousands of people in the world are praying to God at the same time, he can hear you. Isn't that a wonderful thing? It's been really good to see you again. Let me know how you're getting on and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care, lots of love, bye for now. Well, let me share with you a few notices now, uh, just to say that this week we have our virtual uh, Digging Deeper groups in the evening on Tuesday evening and Wednesday evening. Do join in with those. Uh, then we meet again like this next Sunday, so I hope you'll be able to join us uh, for virtual church again uh, then. Uh, next weekend, uh, I'm on holiday, and so my co-minister, Pete, uh, who is now back from sabbatical, uh, will be leading the service, and an old friend of the fellowship, Malcolm McGregor will be bringing a talk to us from God's Word. Uh, and then the following week, we're going to be starting a new series called Introducing Jesus. Uh, in his gospel, John records for us a series of conversations that Jesus had with different people at different times. And from each conversation, we learn something new about Jesus. We learn more about who he is, what he came to do, and also what his priorities and his concerns are. So we hope this series, which will run for a few weeks, will be helpful. Uh, we hope it will be helpful if you're looking at who Jesus is for the first time and uh, trying to discover more about him. Uh, but that it will also be helpful if you're someone who already knows Jesus. And our prayer is that each one of us will get to know him better and understand more of what it means uh, to follow him. By the time we broadcast this this morning, children's resources and JCB worksheets will be available uh, to accompany our service this morning. Uh, again, if you're not currently on the circulation list for that or for any resources or emails uh, from the church and you would like to be, do please get in contact with us and we'll be very happy uh, to include you in those. Well, there is lots to pray about at present and we're going to come to prayer now. Uh, so let's come and let's pray together. Our great Father and Lord, we want to praise you for who you are. We thank you that you are the creator of the world that we live in. We thank you that we live in a world that didn't just happen by chance. It wasn't just the product of a big bang and some random accident. But that, Father, it was carefully planned and designed and devised and created by a God who loves his world and who loves the people within it. And Father, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you for the ultimate way that you have shown that by sending your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to rescue us from our sin, to make it possible for us to be reconnected with you, to know your love and your friendship, and to know your presence with us in every part of our lives. And Father, as we look back over the last seven days, we want to thank you for your goodness to us uh, in so many ways over another week. And at this time where we celebrated VE Day, we want to thank you for the peace that was secured at that time. We thank you for the sacrifice of so many who gave their lives as they served their country. And we thank you for the peace that we have enjoyed since that time. We thank you that there has been no third world war, and we pray that there never will be. And Heavenly Father, we ask today that you would comfort and help those on both sides of that war who mourn the loss of loved ones and who grieve, and for whom this time will bring back uh, memories that are sad and difficult to face. We pray today that they may know your help and your comfort at this time, and that they may come to know you as the one who heals our emotional wounds and who promises to bind up our broken hearts. And Father, we continue to pray, of course, for the situation we find ourselves as uh, we look ahead to a new week. We pray especially perhaps for our Prime Minister and Cabinet as they make critical decisions shortly about how we continue to respond to the crisis that we are in. And Father, we ask that you will overrule with your wisdom and give them your guidance, lead them carefully, we pray, and particularly in the measures that are to be announced later today. And Father, can we pray too that we will continue to make real and lasting progress as we seek to reduce and contain the effects of this virus, and also that good and rapid progress will be made in the search for a vaccine to bring the protection that we are looking for. And Father, we also pray for our world, 
We pray for wisdom for all those leaders who are in positions of power. We pray that you would give them wisdom. We pray that right across the globe that the number of uh, deaths will decrease markedly. And Father, Father, we pray too that you would preserve international relations between the nations at this time. May there be no tensions that escalate, uh, no disagreements, but may there be that harmony and cohesion across our international community. Father, we pray again for those who serve so sacrificially in the NHS and in care homes across the country. We ask again for their protection and we ask too for their strength. We ask that you would help them and preserve them, that you would help them as they deal with pressure and tiredness. Father, would you please guard their mental health and their physical, physical health and well-being at this time. And Father, too, of course, we continue to pray for your comfort and help for those who mourn and grieve. We ask for your help for those who are isolated, who are missing contact with friends and family, who feel so lonely at this time of isolation. We pray that you would comfort them. And most of all, Father, as we survey our world and our nation and indeed our community, we pray that you would speak into our world and our nation through this crisis. We pray that many would come to know you and come to know your love and forgiveness and the new life that you promise to all who turn to you in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, for ourselves now, as we come to look into your word, would you please help us to understand it and grasp its message? And in a very real sense, we pray that we may have hearts which are receptive to your voice and all that you have to say to us through your word. And that after hearing your word, that you would work in our hearts to make us different people, the people that you call us to be, people who resemble the Lord Jesus Christ more and more and seek to make him king of our lives. And we pray these things in his precious name. Amen. Well, Debbie has very kindly chosen some helpful songs for our time this morning, which uh, connects so well with a message from God's Word in Daniel chapter 7 that we're going to be looking at uh, shortly. Uh, we're going to play two uh, of those songs now, two of the videos. Uh, the songs are King of the Ages and He Will Hold Me Fast. Uh, they're two great songs that glorify and praise the great God who we come to worship this morning, but that also reassure us they reassure us that he is the one who is close to his people, who loves us with an amazing love and who promises to hold us secure from here into eternity. Let me encourage you to sing at home. If you're watching this on our Sunday playlist and at the end of this video, it should automatically take you to the two songs that I've just mentioned for you to listen and sing along to. And then Rod and Debbie will be reading part of the Bible that we're looking at this morning, Daniel chapter 7. So you may want to have that open before you. And then we'll come and look at that in detail. So let's sing together wherever we are. And then we'll come to look at God's word together. <laughs> 